how clean that is. Bet you've never seen a commercial van that clean. All right, welcome back party people. Let's do another quick van update as we start to uh, prep this thing to go on the road. So I'll show you what I've uh, been doing inside and outside. Took some time out today to kind of road prep this thing. Put a coat of wax on it and uh, put some plastic protector on it. And hopefully that will keep the bugs to a minimum. Kind of a pain too. It's this thing has some real estate when you're talking about waxing. I think my arms almost fell off. Now typically what I've done is I've used the mirror to power the um, the radar detector. But uh, this was a little bit more difficult to get to. And since it has the rear view camera in the actual mirror itself, I'm not going to play around with it like I did on the Nissan. The Nissan I just uh, I just junked it in with the, with a pin connector and uh, powered the radar detector off of that. But uh, So I've got to run two cables or two wires down to this fuse box find some switch fuses and uh, so that's what I'll show you how to do next um, how to find a good a switch fuse that's not used or how to use an existing one I think this I see some empty slots down here um, let's see if I can get the camera to focus here so I see a couple empty slots here and there's one up there as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna insert a fuse in here and I'm gonna get my multimeter and I'm going to tap. These fuses have access points to put your probe on top so you can tell what kind of voltage you got there. So I'll uh, see if it's live when the switch is off or when it's switched on. So I'm looking for switched um, so that everything turns off when I turn the key off on the actual vehicle. So um, I'm going to go get my multimeter. Some people use a light. I don't have one of those lights. Multimeter works just as good. Multimeter is your best friend if you're doing anything uh, electrical, electrical engineering wise or just electricity involved um, and that's what I tend to use um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll insert a probe on one side of this fuse and then we'll ground the other uh, side out and we'll see if we get 12 volts across it and if we don't then we'll turn the key on and then if we get 12 volts we know we've got switch power and that's what we're looking for and that's what we're tapping at and then we'll figure out how to get from this fuse panel through this access panel and somehow come out the top. So I think I'm going to have to take a new van apart up here. And um, it, I hate these connectors. Uh, if they've got the same kind of connectors on it as the, this panel that I just took off, I thoroughly, thoroughly hate these type of connectors. But I've got some plastic tools. I think I might be able to get it out. I don't even think I can get a hand at the back to actually pull up. So this is going to be interesting for sure. And try not to tear everything up. But uh, let's do that. So this is the actual wire that I have to run for the radar detector. So it's basically just standard uh, terminals on one end. It's got a fuse in it. And the radar detector itself is a Bell 9500. It's a pretty old radar detector, but uh, it's powered from an RJ11 connector here. So it really only has two leads. And that's the two leads you see there. So what I'll do is I'll find a screw down there to ground this one out, and then I'll snip the uh, I'll snip this blade connector off of the the hot side here, and we'll insert it into this add a fuse thing here and crimp it, and uh, that should be good. All right, so I have my multimeter here, and on the common side or the ground side here, I have a little alligator clip. And typically on a car like this, the, the door latch will be a bare, bare piece of metal that you can actually ground to. So I'm just going to put this little alligator kit clip on the, uh, the door latch. And I apologize, my, uh, my leads are not long enough, so one day I'm going to have to build some longer leads. But, uh, and then we just use the, uh, the red side as a probe. Alright, so now I'm just going to throw one of these uh, fuses in one of the empty slots in the fuse panel. You can see on the top here, there's a little bare metal and that's where you can actually stick your probe. Um, so I'll just plug this in and uh, I know this is the right size fuse because I did some research on the uh, the 9500 radar detector 
and it uses actually very little power and they recommend a three amp uh, fuse there so i've got this three amp i'm going to plug it in the fuse panel down below we'll probe it and we'll see if it's always hot or if it comes on switch if it comes on switch then we've got the right um panel and then we'll use our uh add a circuit plug that in and figure out how to route our uh wires up through the panel there all right so since this fuse panel is kind of a pain to get to i'm gonna i'm gonna just use a pair of needle nose pliers on the end of this fuse to insert it into one of those empty spots let's see if we can find the empty one here this one right there make sure our meter grounds on all right and then we're going to turn our voltmeter on dc and we're in a all good auto range there and so now let's see how close i can get this there i might be able to get it down here let's try that all right we've got our ground on hopefully our probe will reach otherwise i'll be making these tonight all right so here's our probe and let's just go right on the top of that three amp fuse into that little access hole there and see what we get so we literally have no voltages there so just all right so we have the key off and I'm going to probe this 3 amp fuse there and we have no voltage let's turn the key on to accessory and now we have 12 volts so we found our 12 volt uh, switch source all right so now what I have to do is go in search of a route from this fuse panel somehow get that cable up here and I think maybe I can get through the uh, I'll have to check I might be able to get through the side of the radio and then come out the top up there so we might have to take that apart so let's check that out so how I'm popping this thing up I just uh, put these uh, got a set of these tools and I just went in these are plastic they won't scratch up just went in and started filling out where the clips are as you can see there's a clip right there there's a clip right there and so when I put my tool in I was very close to that clip that way you don't uh, bust the plastic up and I'll tell you how I knew the clips were actually located there uh, first if you have a buddy that works for a uh, for a repair shop here he might be able to get you inside the manual and actually see where these clips are but uh, if you go online and you go to a parts ordering place they'll actually show you the pieces and uh, usually they'll have a, an exploded diagram view and you can tell it exactly where the clips are actually at on this piece and you know when you start prying you want to be close to those clips um, in order not to crack the plastic so what i'm going to try to do now is just work my way around this edge here and, and get it unclipped and then try to unclip the back with my hand if I can. It's very hard to get to because the windshield's so close to the dash back there. All right, I was able to actually unclip this side. And uh, I'm just going to try to work my way around now. All right, so that's what I figured. It was kind of hard to get out, but I see why now. So uh, not only do you have these type of metal clips here, but you have these ones that are there so you actually need to pull the uh when you insert your tool you need to uh press on these toward the inside in order to unclip them but yeah if you want to know how to pop the uh radio access piece off of a 2019 ford transit van there you go all right so i see the light so there's a little access hole through I don't know if you can see it or not but there's an access hole there all right guys I'll show you another tip you can do especially if you're a bicycle uh, rider like me this uh, shifter cable if you've got extra shifter cable around it is just rigid enough to actually hold shape so you can fish it through 
and uh, you can use this to fish your wire back through and this is what I've done here um, so save yourself some some heartache but uh, you can see down there I found my my entry point and here's the other end so what I'm gonna do is just uh, use some electrical tape and uh, tape around this and connect my other cable or my other wires and I'll just pull it back through in reverse so you want to try to use the end that actually has the uh, little compression tip on it too because you want the tape to actually grab around the ledge so I'm just going to tape this to our uh, wire here and pull it through back all right so there's how I have it taped you just want to tape the uh, the end there so it doesn't get snagged on anything as you're pulling it through all right I just uh, fished it through and so I'm gonna remove my fish tape here all right so next I'm going to strip our hot end or a red end into our Adifuse module. All right, I was able to get a good, a nice tight uh, crimp on this uh, butt here. So now let's go find us a lug for the ground. All right, I found the ground lug way back here. All right, so I have the uh, the add a fuse module plugged into the fuse uh the empty fuse spot so uh let's plug the other end to our radar detector and see if we have power all right so i don't expect anything to happen now because we don't have the key on so we try to power nothing let's see if i can find the keys the accessory Voila, we have power on our radar detector. I need to pull the second cable through the dash for the dash cam. And it's a USB cable, so I'm gonna use the same technique as I used yesterday where I fished the uh, shifter cable from a bicycle down through and then pull the uh, USB cable back up. And the thing that I was waiting on was uh, a converter for uh, a but convert 12 volt to 5 volt. So it has a USB in one end that is 5 volt. And then this is going to go into my fuse box to the add a fuse. And I've got to put a ring terminal on this and ground it out to the chassis. So. We we'll use the same process that we did yesterday and get that installed and i think that will free up all my usb ports up front and my 12 volt ports up front for people that are sitting up here want to charge their phones or laptops whatever it may be all right i just got my uh second cable run through and my usb end is now coming out the bottom all right here's our final harness we have our adapter plugged in and our ATM add a fuse and I have a ground ring terminal here and so now I just need to crawl up under there and hook it all up all right <clears throat> got both add a fuses in and the uh, nest of wires down there I need to tie wrap and then mount the uh, adapter but let's give this thing a test There we go. Dash cam and radar detector. Now we just have to figure out what we're gonna do with these. And uh, when we put our centerpiece back in. So I might have to notch something out. And uh, see how that goes. So I need to take a look at that, but I uh, need to fix the wiring mess under there first. All right, so there's our final product. 
so I ended up just uh, snaking those uh, wires out the edge there. So just a little bit of gap there, but it uh, keeps me from having to actually manipulate or cut on uh, part of the vehicle. So there we go. All right, guys, you know what to do. Till next time, skill up and ride, van up and go.